Hi, long time no see. In the last episode, I successfully ran my MSPC board. But just after releasing that, Raspberry team released a new piece of hardware, which is Raspberry Pico 2, powered by new MCU RP2350. They also announced that new chips will be released in four different variants, with and without internal flash, also in two different pinout packages. That did to my plans. Why? With RP2040 I had a few problems to work around. Firstly, the RP2040 package contained less GPIO than I required, so I've used two RP2040 and IO multiplexers for the motherboard. With RP2050B I can fit almost everything in a single chip. New chip contains twin ARM and RISC-V dual cores, which is quite an interesting feature. You can select which one you want to use. ARM or RISC-V? For ARM there are two Cortex-M33 cores. RP2040 contains Cortex-M0+, which has problems with PLT generation for my dynamic linker. The third improvement is that RP2350 allows read and write in SSI peripheral. Thanks to that I can attach a PSRAM chip and mount it inside the memory map, allowing execution of firmware from that. Thanks to that I can implement programs that require more RAM than MCU provides. So let's redesign my MSPC computer. In that episode I'm taking an MSPC motherboard and I will also share the PCB design for VGA and FPGA extensions in further episodes. I want to be prepared when RP2050B will be available on the market. And to be honest, I registered for demo samples, so maybe it won't take too long. I based the new design on the old MSPC board and RP2350 hardware design document. That document will be your friend if you want to prepare your RP2350 board. Let's walk through schematics, starting from power supplies. My board has a lot of them. The question why? Two DC-DC regulators are for supplying power for extension cards. Schematic for them was taken from its datasheet. One LDO supplies 5V for USB. My board will be a USB host and must deliver 5V to devices. LDOs are simple to use, an additional 0 ohm resistor is placed just for debugging. In case of any problems I can remove that circuit from the PCB. The last power supply is finally the power supply for RP2350. The old design contained two, separated for the north and south bridges. The new release will include just one, so I added only one. Schematic of course is taken from the datasheet. RP2350 contains internal DC-DC that provides 1.1V for the core, so more additional components are required for the internal regulator. A crystal oscillator I chose ECS120. I have few of them in my storage, left from the previous MSPC board. They have 10 ppm accuracy, which is more than enough. I calculated the capacitor value according to the hardware design document. For the Quad SPI peripheral, I decided to wire two devices. I will attach an external flash on one slot and in the other PSRAM memory. I decided to add a USB hub connected directly to the MCU. Adding USB hubs for microcontroller is not common practice, so I don't know if I will be able to use it, but I'm going to try it anyway. For the USB hub I use cheap chip, which is schematic taken from datasheet and publicly available schematics using that chip. External bus mainly consists of connectors wired to MCU to keep the lowest possible latency. But even with the biggest package of the new microcontroller from Raspberry, there is still an insufficient number of GPIOs. So I've used analog multiplexers and demultiplexers for device detection, handling interrupts and resets. SD card design was taken from the old board, which was based on RP2040 hardware design document. I also added an audio digital analog converter powered by that chip. From Texas Instruments. Then I redesigned the PCB. 
In MSPC version 1, I planned to attach external devices to the bus vertically, but then I realized that now it's hard to design a case for it, so I didn't want to do that again. With fewer components, I can also reduce bus slots and make them attachable laying on the motherboard. I used 4 layer stack up with signal plus power, ground ground, signal plus power layers. For signal wires, I'll calculate the width of traces using the GLCPCB impedance calculator. Bus signals are going to work on around 1 to 200 MHz. So maybe it's not really mandatory, but I decided to ensure impedance to omit potential problems with signal propagation. Also, I tuned the length of the bus lines. I designed a PCB split into parts. Power supply sections are LDOs and DC-DC converters. Bus section for attachable expansion cards. The main CPU section has an RP2350 and an audio DAC and connectors with the USB hub. PCBs have been ordered so I'm waiting for them and for the cheap release on the market. It's finally time to clean up my part storage. I no longer know what I have and what I don't. Some time ago I created a cloud-based system in AppSheet to monitor my parts. Now I'm printing dedicated boxes for them, marking them with QR codes and then I can easily update them during soldering and or other project activities. In the meantime, I'm finishing basic support for the Raspberry Pico board in Renault. I think I will release it for public use and then maybe I will try to port it for RP2350. But we will see because it's uh, really time consuming. That's all for today. I hope to see you soon. Bye.